Hello, my name is Timothy Hobbs, and I recently purchased a Sieg SX2L. Uh, it's a mm, small milling machine. Uh, there's only two companies, uh, as far as I can tell, that manufacture small milling machines. One of them is Proxon, and the other one is Sieg. And Proxon releases its milling machines under the Proxon brand name, and Proxons tend to be very small and rather plasticky. They don't uh, seem to be designed to cut strong materials like steel. Uh, Sieg always seems to white label their machines. Uh, mine is white labeled and relabeled as a rotwork, but that doesn't mean anything. It was actually built by Sieg, shipped from uh, China to me in a crate, and that applies to a whole host of brands that have milling machines that look the same and indeed are the same, I believe. Mm. So, you'll notice on um, if you read forum posts on the internet, a lot of people make fun of the these small milling machines as being horrible. Chinese-made crap. And, um... If you're like me and you live in a house and you want to do some milling, you don't really have any choice because that's literally the only thing on the market. And yet there is some truth to the horrible Chinese-made crap argument. Uh, here I have a dial indicator on my machine. And if I press against the machine with my hand, you can see the dial moving. Maybe if I put it the face into the light, you'll see better. So I'm getting about 10 hundredths movement just by pressing lightly, relatively lightly on the machine. Um, if I wiggle here, it moves. That's the height changing. The height should never change. And just to convince you that this isn't my fault, I could... Uh, Try to grab a tool somewhere and tighten up the gib screws here. So these are the gib screws, and you have this little wrench to tighten them with. And you can tighten them down. Mine are already pretty tight, so I can't tighten them down any further. Of course, you have to kind of move the nuts out of the way, which is awkward and silly, and I don't know why it's done that way. But at this point, my gib screws are tight enough that I cannot easily move the thing, but I'm still getting that movement. So the problem is not the gib screws. Uh, and down here, there's also gib screws underneath the machine. Those are also tight. Uh, my gib screws have been coming undone as the machine vibrates when it works, especially if I ask a lot from it. If I do a deep cut, there's some vibration and the gib screws just come out, uh, which isn't great. It means that you kind of constantly have to fiddle with it. Um, my machine came with gib locks here, uh, these little levers, and uh, here I had to remove the gib lock because it was getting in the way of my vise, and I, and I use a wrench instead. Um, so, this machine has the ability to change the angle of the main column. Right here you can see the angle is indicated. I'll shine the light here for you. And you can change the angle, but this is only a very rough angle changing. And I don't think I'll ever use it because setting the angle back is difficult and if you unscrew this bolt right here in the back, the machine will fall over, crash to the ground, which is really not good. Uh, you don't want your the, the top half of your machine hitting the table. Uh, so I'm definitely not going to be using that feature and it's a feature that a lot of people have criticized as being... Um, harmful to the machine's stability. And as we see when I push on it, it really isn't stable. 
Another thing that's interesting is right now I have the machine really straight. So if you look at the dial indicator here, when my uh, dial indicator is over on this side of the machine, if I turn my dial indicator over to the other side, I've only moved uh, about a hundredth of, an, of a millimeter. Uh, so it's really straight, but now watch as I'm turning the, the, the dial indicator. You see that uh, the the dial indicator has moved out of that uh, out of this marked area. So the column is actually crooked. It moves out of the marked area and then back into it as I turn, and that means uh, that the column is crooked or the table is not flat. And I'm not sure which it is because the table really is not flat. Um, so here I'm moving along the table. Um, I'll set this up so that you can you can hopefully see the dial indicator. Try to zoom in here, and then I'll and then I'll scroll along. Shouldn't have tightened the gib screws up so much. But you can see the thing moving, and I'm not sure if that's because the top column isn't stable or if it's because the table's not flat. And I noticed on the other side of the table that it gets worse. I have to loosen up my gibbs again. Uh, here's the tool. It's not too bad. The movement when I press on the column is quite significant, but the, the wiggling as I go along the table with the gibbs properly tightened is only a couple of hundredths, which, uh, well, before I got this machine, I was trying to drill things with a handheld drill, and a centimeter is what was like the smallest measurement in my mind at that point. And now I'm getting all upset because, because my machine is, you see, as I get across the table, it's, it's two hundredths out of the range that it was over here. Uh, and so that's, that's like getting me worried, but it really shouldn't be because, you know, man, I, I used to not be able to even think about what a hundredth would be. And I still can't really imagine what a hundredth means. So the fact that I have at the end of this table this, this loss of precision up to, up to at the very end, it's out by almost five hundredths, but, but that's less than a tenth of a millimeter. So for a home shop, that's pretty good. And you're not going to get anything better since they're a monopoly in this market. Mm. One thing that is not so good that I'll show you. If I remove the dial indicator from its holder here, You can see I made a little block block holder for, for the dial indicator so I could put it in the, the drill chuck. But I can remove it from this. And we can do a little experiment to see how straight the column turns. Because there were some videos of, of some milling machines that wobbled. And that made me concerned. And mine does too which really isn't good. 
have my dial indicator here. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take out the drill chuck as well, which I do by by putting a wrench up here and putting a, a another wrench in this hole right here and pulling away. The first time I, I tried to remove the drill chuck it didn't work and I read on the internet that you have to bang a hammer on this and that's true. For the MK3 or Morris Taper 3 uh, drill chuck it doesn't come out the first time. You have to whack it the first time. After that it gets loose uh, and you don't have to whack it anymore. So, what I do in order to get the, the drill check out is I first loosen it up with the wrench. Loosen it up just like this. So that there's about one millimeter distance between this top nut here and the disc. Then I take my hammer A hammer with a metal head. I don't know where it is. I have to get a new one. Took it downstairs. So I take my hammer and I hit it hard. Now the chuck is loose and I unscrew it the rest of the way. So here you can see the chuck. It has threading inside. And here is this little screw that goes in, or this big screw that goes into it. Uh, if you were to unscrew the screw all the way, and then hit it with the hammer to push it out, then you would be pushing just on the last thread in the chuck, which would be bad, you would be damaging it. That's why you want to get it out just one millimeter. The other reason why to push on the last thread when you're hammering it out is that it'll fall on the table which would damage the table, and I actually did this. I have a mark in my table, unfortunately, from the drill chuck falling onto the table after I was hammering on it. So it's much better to, to unscrew it just a little bit, hammer it, get it loose, and then unscrew it the rest of the way, holding the chuck with your hand as you're unscrewing it. So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to take this head down again. Now, I'm not going to straighten up the vise, but uh, that doesn't matter for this experiment. We just need the vise to be tight. So I'm going to tighten it down here. I really shouldn't leave the, the vise unstraightened because I might forget about that and then, then that would be bad in the future, but... Just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to save the time. So I tighten the vise until it's open just a little bit. And I can place my dial indicator in the vise. This isn't good. I have to actually remove one of these handles. My fiance wants me to include her in the video.
have to remove the other handle from the from the thing. This is kind of a pain. I had to I had to move this this give lock thing here because it was getting in the way. Everything gets in the way on this machine because everything is so tightly packed. Everything gets in the way of everything else. What can you do? It's small. It only weighs as much as I do. So now I'm pushing the dial indicator into this rotating shaft right here. Push it in a little bit, lock my gibbs in both directions. This is the one that I had to remove because it was getting in the way of the, the vise, so I have to use this wrench for that. One of the things that really pissed me off when I bought this machine is that you can't change the direction of the turning. Never occurred to me that that, that would be a problem, you know? It's just like every cheap drill I've ever met has had the ability to change the direction of the turning. But this thing, no. This expensive machine that I buy doesn't have the ability. So when I have it just in here and I turn and I turn this machine or I turn the shaft like this then there's no wobble whatsoever. It's, it's way less than a hundredth. But when I turn it on it starts dancing. Some people showed uh, some really severe wobbles. I'm not seeing anything really severe, but uh, it's definitely not in the, the thousands of a millimeter that I see some machines being claimed as being straight to. It's got some wobble in it. It's got some looseness in it. Maybe it's just the fact that the top shaft is so, so loose and so wobbly that the whole machine starts to shake when it turns. But that's not great. You're not going to get really round holes uh, on this machine. So that's, that's it for today. That's all I'm going to show you. Um, and goodbye.